Hello and welcome to this afternoon. I'm sorry, this evening. <laughs> it's evening time. Evening taste challenge. Good afternoon. Good evening, uh, Craig. Uh, Swenson is watching. Now we're doing two American blended whiskeys. This is Sunnybrook. It's Kentucky, <clears throat> to be specific, Kentucky blended whiskey, and it was introduced in 1891. It's 20% straight whiskey, and it's 80% grain neutral spirits. And the straight whiskeys in here are aged at least four years. It comes from Beam Suntory. I know they bought Sunnybrook years ago. <clears throat> I think they bought it from Seagram's when Seagram's went. Ronnie, yes. Cheers, good sir. Cheers to you, Ronnie. Good to, good to hear from you. Um, <clears throat> I haven't been doing too much today. I went to church at 7.30 a.m. and then I did Stout Sunday. And that was about it. Went walking, you know, a mile and a half. But anyway, uh, the competitor. So this is Sunny Brook. It's an old brand. I don't know if they still make this straight bourbon. They might, because anytime you say something's not made, then you go in a store and you see it. You know, they don't list us on the website anyway. There's the there's the government inspector. So he's ensuring that it's genuine, non genuine, without this label. Not remarkable because all whiskey's government inspected, but they just feeding on the obvious. Like they'll say, aged in oak barrels. Well, all of it's aged in oak barrels, but maybe people don't know that. And so they'll say, oh, I'm getting this as aged in oak barrels. I'm not criticizing it. I mean, do marking any way you want. If people don't know, it's up to, you know, it's too bad. Didn't mow the lawn today? No. Did that Thursday. I could do it today. I could have done it today and it would have cut a lot of grass. Four days. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It was already grown. Looks like it could be cut after four days. Actually, it looked kind of shabby after two. Because it grows so fast. Now, the heat has set in, so every day is getting to 90. And we've gotten rain off and on. Well, that's it. That's a recipe for growth. Once that happens, it's going to take off. It was wearing me out Thursday because the grass here in my at least gets so thick. It's like trying to cut carpet in some spots. Now in the backyard, it'll cut easy. It's level, you know, pretty much, pretty much. But there's so many big trees. I guess it thins it out. It's probably killing it. In other words, oh, I cracked the top and it, it made a hiss. Psh, what's that telling you? Built up pressure. Why? Don't know. It, it's low. There's only like 20% left. No, 15% left. I guess fumes build up in it. What else could it be? Fumes build up from the alcohol and it releases pressure. I don't think it ages in the bottle. People say it doesn't. I'm not a scientist. I don't know. Bluegrass Dan says, good evening, Professor Ronald J. RJT. I'm no professor, believe me. All right, so clear bottle. This is King Square, the competitor, black cap. Oh, yes, the famous King Square. You say famous. I never heard of it. Yeah, I know. I'm kidding. It's not famous. Now, in the background, you can't really see that, but in the background, there's like an old, there's like a pen and ink drawing of an old English square. The King Square. What does this have to do with England? Nothing. <laughs> it's bottled in Florida, uh, which is not a kingdom. Um uh, but they probably just came up with the name. They just made it up. I mean, what else? Auburndale, Florida is not King Square Distillers Company, okay? Just like this bottle is not Sunnybrook Distilling Company. It's Beam Suntory, and this is Caribbean. Caribbean Distillers, who mainly does rum. But they do own... They actually own a distillery in Puerto Rico where they make uh, some kind of brand of rum. They're part of the Rums of Puerto Rico Trade Association, believe it. Uh, this is a strange blend ratio. It's 27.5% straight whiskey, 
and 72.5% grain spirits, or if you want to call that moonshine. So this is a higher percentage of straight whiskey than you'll get in most any other blended whiskeys. And look how light it is. It's light like corn whiskey. You see what I mean? It's yellow like corn whiskey. If you went to get mellow corn, which is the 100 proof corn, straight corn whiskey, look, it's look. it looks like that. You know why? Because that's what it looks like for real. Okay. The professor of whiskey. Yeah, maybe. Not really. So this is what blended whiskey looks like for real. If you don't add caramel color. It's pale, pale yellow. Yellow. It doesn't take on much color in a used it could be a 25, 30, 40 year old wood barrel. Bourbon has to be a brand new, freshly charred oak barrel, never before utilized. Well, this is not bourbon, this is blended whiskey. Okay, the rules are much less strict. Although the rules for bourbon aren't really that strict. If you read it, there's hardly any rules. I see people on the internet making a lot of statements which are factually incorrect about bourbon. But I'll try to write a nice message on there review and say, well, actually, you know, I usually don't get a response, but um, I'm not trying to be ugly to them. I just know what I'm talking about by virtue of reading the Tax and Trade Bureau, a very informative website. This one liter bottle cost me about, some keys tell 649, but that seems too low. Maybe it was 849. I was in, um, Orange, Texas, back in March when all the hoopla started. It's a okay looking label, I guess, but the strange thing about most of these American blended whiskeys is they all have this linen yellow label. It's so drab, I was, I was fussing about that this morning. It's like drab, drab, drab. Like what is the whole deal on that? Every, every American blended whiskey needs to have a drab label. Uh, they seem to. I mean, it's strange. I'll be right back. I want to make an adjustment on the air conditioner. No problem. Okay, so then the 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 Sunny Brook. Now, the weird thing about this King Square, I'm looking on Specs website. That's a liquor store in Texas. Actually, where I bought this at Specs. It's saying King Square blended whiskey, $6.31. Strange price, but it, I think it was $5.99 when I bought it. Same size bottle, $7.50, standard, price, standard size, but they're saying it's 90 proof, 45% alcohol, 90 proof. Could that be now or then or what? It's a strange, it's a strange, yeah, it's a strange blend ratio anyway. I don't know. I can't figure out these companies with their, their oddball products. I don't know. You never know what you're going to find when you run in these liquor stores. I don't mean run into the liquor store like some people are doing this past week. I mean, you know, shop in a liquor store. It has to tell the truth. Yes, I am trying to tell the proof, BGD. He's talking to PRJT. <laughs> Everybody's got initials. See, when I give you an initial, that means I'm getting used to your comment on my channel. And it also means I don't want to keep typing out the whole name. All right. So this is like a chestnut color. It's not a dark brown. It's like you would say tan. Tan. Got to close my eyes. Sorry, y'all. But uh, if I glance, I'm going to know what it is. I'm going to know anyway. I'm telling you, nothing tastes like King Square. Is it a good? Uh, so they're both so cheap. They're both less than $10. All right. So and they're both so not common. <laughs> Ronnie, yes, all's good. I won't get into it publicly. Maybe in an after chat. Oh, okay, yeah, working out that little incident. That's shit, that should be easy to work out because there's nothing to it. Uh, did you have a good mass today, Professor? I did. I was trying to pay attention as best I could. My mind tends to wander, but I did an all right job. 
my mind's always racing, you know, like thinking about what I'm going to do next when I'm doing like right now, I'm probably thinking about what I'm going to do next. Okay. Um, so, uh, here we go. I got to close my eyes. The King Square is strange. It, it's, it tastes like they add a lot of high rye whiskey. Oh, I mean, the straight whiskey could be all rye. There's no rule against that. Uh, it, as long as it's straight whiskey, 27.5% straight whiskey. And what does that mean? Aged in a new barrel, charred oak barrel. It has to be charred oak. New, never before used. At least two years old. But these are four. These are four. You get the beams, eight starts, two. Uh, beyond that, it doesn't matter what kind of whiskey. It could be straight. I guess conceivably straight corn whiskey. Maybe that's why it's so low, you know, so pale. Maybe it's not bourbon whiskey that they're they're blending into it. Maybe it's straight corn whiskey. Is that allowed? Well, yeah, it's allowed. Read the regulations. They don't say anything. It just says straight whiskey. Bourbon would work fine. All right. Uh, corn whiskey would work fine. Rye whiskey would work fine. I, uh, I doubt that's what they're using because bourbon is so common. It's probably the cheapest one to use. But I guess corn whiskey is pretty cheap too. Straight corn whiskey. I don't know. I don't. I have people that comment sometimes like, "Oh, I do know." And I say, oh, okay, well, I'm always interested. I say, where'd you get that information? And then that's where trouble starts. Because then they'll say something like, well, everybody knows that. Well, I don't know that. Could you document it? Uh, somebody was telling me on Facebook this morning, on my Facebook page, oh, those Dodge trucks were terrible in the 80s. Horrible reliability. I was just posting photos of the trucks. I'm not posting exposés on their reliability or their lack of reliability. And he was going on and on. I said, you seem to be an expert. Seemed to be an expert. I was waiting for him to say something else because I was going to say, could you provide some documents backing that up? Like, do you have some kind of analytical study of reliability for Dodge brand trucks in the 80s? Because then the next statement he made was factually incorrect. He talked about Dodge, Omni, and Plymouth Horizon. He was saying terrible cars. Couldn't have been too terrible. They made them for 11 model years. They were ugly. I agree with that. Kind of ugly, but terrible cars. And they were made by Mitsubishi. I said, no, they were never made by Mitsubishi. They were the Chrysler Corporation. He didn't say anything else. Uh... This smells like the King Square because of that strange peppermint and rye. No, not peppermint. You know what I said last time I did a video a few months ago? I said spearmint. Is whiskey supposed to smell like mint? I don't know. But I've been told in the heat of the day a man died of cold. It smells like mint. Uh this smells like ugh, cornbread. You guys have your Mexican beer picked out? Yes. Sol for me, S-O-L. Thank you, David. I said, why'd you give all that Sol away? He bought cases of it for cheap. He gave me a four pack. He said, I got sick of drinking it. You know, it started tasting like a can. Wasn't even out of date. I said, what? I said, are you one of those people that say canned beer tastes different than bottle? He said, it does. But we didn't get into it. We had too many beers to review yesterday. Okay, well, honestly, 
I think this is the King Square because it's so unusual in the aroma. It seems like it's got a, a whole lot of rye whiskey, peppery spice, and spearmint. Boy, it's strange. Ooh, ooh it's strange. Yes, I know. I've done the only video used for this whiskey in the world. Because I'm the only one that ever apparently found it in the world. You can go to specs, though. I know what you're going to say. Don't brag because you're the only one in the world that wants to even deal with it. Okay. Got me. Got me. You got me. You got me. You got me. All right. Cheers to the world. Ha ha ha. Oh. Ooh. Oh. I had to grip my teeth. Spearmint, peppery rye. Ooh. Ah. It's not bad though, but it's just oh, make you grit your teeth. Make you question things. Oh no. no. Ah. Ah. Mein Führer, I can walk. All right, next. Uh oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> well, 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 well. How do you like that? That tastes even more minty and stink and spearmint than the other one. And more peppery. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. And I thought it was going to be easy. Okay, well, look like we got some more work to do. You see, who's going to win? Well, sometimes there's no winner. I don't know, but that's really strange. I don't know what to do. I don't, I didn't mean no harm. I didn't mean no harm. That's what Archie said. But um, uh, I get you, Joey Jaja. All right. Anyway, why does the whiskey taste like aim toothpaste you know why because it's king square and it's a weird whiskey hey look if i was going to drink cheap whiskey and i wouldn't obviously and i would prefer if no one brought up the fact that i do taste challenges every day because aside from that i don't drink whiskey you are not my all right, now, um, but let's just say for the sake of argument, hypothetically, if I was going to drink cheap whiskey every day, aside from the everyday taste challenges, would I get King Square over all the rest? I would do that, except for Seagram Seven Crown, which demolishes all the competition. Um, I would get it. Because it's appallingly strange. It's everything it ought to not be. Yet, on the other hand, there's a strange, bizarre off kilter. appeal to it. I don't know what it is. Mm. 
Well, I'm gonna call. Let me look at the comments. I gotta make sure I don't look at the the bottles. The, the bottles. The bottles. Glasses. Uh oh, all these comments. You got oh, see the USA in your Chevrolet. Well, I got Ford coming up. I was doing Ford photos. Why do people call me? Let me see who this is. It's Cartwright. I'm going to call him back. I know what he's about to tell me about this game that's on TV. I'm going to call him back. I'm going to call you back, Cartwright. Okay. Um, I won't be long. I'm like George Harrison. I won't be long. I won't be long. I won't be long. All right. Anyway, um, yeah, I got Ford coming up. I was doing 40, 1946 to 50. Oh, I went all the way to 1960 today in my files. All right. Cheers, Ron. Miscellaneous magnets. Hello. Cheers to you. Thank you for the three mug clanks. Cheers, says Joseph Appleton. Good to hear from you again, Joe. Miscellaneous magnets. Bon appetit. FD says, hey, Ron, I hope you are okay and there are no riots by you. I heard New Orleans is bad. No, there ain't nothing going on in New Orleans too much. It's pretty quiet. I just watched the news an hour ago. I mean, the hippies that are out there, you know, you know what I'm talking about. How's it going, Ronald, says Jordy K. Oh, it's fine. I shouldn't say hippies. I'm sorry. It's the yippies. Have you tried Uzo? Yes, at the Greek festival. I liked it. I All right, Carl, right? He's leaving a message. Jared, he's saying, the game's on. The, the replay. I, I'm Later, dude, says Ronald. Later to you. Okay, well, he's got to go. People can't watch these things too long. They got things to do. You know, there's a lot going on right now, like. Oh, that's right, there's no entertainment. <clears throat> Never mind. Okay, I'm going to call it. I know one thing, though. See, when you do one whiskey against another, it'll bring out things you never encountered with the others. That's the strange thing. But, um, whoa, this is so fascinating. Actually, it really is fascinating. I'm not trying to be cheeky or smart aleck. I thought this was going to be a sure shot. I thought it would be like the Beastie Boys, a sure shot. But, oh, no. And you want to know why? Because they're both high rye. You know, for in their class, I don't mean in, in reality, but for blended American whiskey, they're they're ra rather high rye. So, um, and that that peppery spice has got me thrown for a loop. But even though that's the case that they gave me, rye was the case. You know, whiskey was the case that they gave me. I still say that this is the King Square, and my left hand could be to your right. King Square, and we'll know by the light. Oh, oh, and Frank, most of it, but it would be so light. be so pale, strong. Ah, ha, ha, ha. You thought I was going to lose, but you but you were wrong because I got it right. Because I got it right. Okay. I'm going to do a mean cha-cha. All right. Well, Kevin Johnson says, Hey, Ronald, nice review. Thank you. I did my best. When are you doing Sunnybrook versus Seagram 7 crown? Oh, well, uh, you know how they say you save the best for last? Look how short I cut the sides with that set on zero ratio or zero level. I was just like, ah. Uh, I'll save it for last. So when I get to Seagram 7 crown, you know I'm done. And then it's crown royal. And then it's on. On, on. I got 15 people watching. I'll have 1,500 watching. Crown Royal. That's when it's going to take off like skyrockets in flight. I'm doing a nice Cabernet Sauvignon review, and I will post it on Alcohol Legs. Oh, good. 
I'll look at it tomorrow morning. I believe today is the 50th anniversary of the release of Let It Be. No, it was earlier this month, actually. You might be thinking about the movie. The album came out a couple of weeks ago, 50 years ago. But yeah, this month, May of 50 years ago, Let It Be hit the market. And people say, well, it was recorded before Abbey Road. Well, uh, yeah and no. Most of it was, but then they did record a song after 1970 began. They recorded I, Me, Mine in 1970. But John Lennon wasn't there for the recording. But that's nothing unusual. People say, well, let's see, they were broke up because he wasn't there at the record. Well, that doesn't mean anything because, I mean, the Beatles recorded many songs over their career when all four men were not there. Like they say, where's Ringo? Oh, he's busy. Uh, oh, Paul McCartney said, I'll play drums. Nobody's going to know. And that would happen. Or John Lennon might say, oh, I'll play bass on this. Just record it. But they're not going to know. And so that's what they would do. And uh, there was no, a lot of people don't realize that. Or they would have somebody else play it. Tell that guy, uh, come uh, down the hall and play this. He's a good session um, rhythm guitar as well. I mean, that's what they would do. But that's what, then, of course, that's what a lot of bands do. <laughs> but it is true. They recorded uh, I, Me, Mine in 1970. Okay, I agree, says Kamarasazi. I would love to hear a Civil War discussion maybe with you and Ronnie S. Yes. Civil War? Oh, I assume you're talking about the war between the states, which was not actually a civil war, but okay. I would do it, but he said he wasn't particularly interested in that war. I've made some many videos about it, many videos. They're still posted like... Um, I made a video about secession was a mistake. Still posted. It's amazing how much misinformation is out there about the, what you're calling the Civil War. Yeah, a lot of misinformation. Yeah, ain't no doubt. All right. Um, this is very interesting because I thought it was going to be a dreadful uh, taste challenge today by virtue of what I was taste challenging. Eric Clapton is a good guitar player, says David Etchells. Well, that's what they say on, oh, they're always saying on TV. Uh, what about the War of 1812? Yeah. What about it? I made a video about that, actually, a couple of videos, I believe. Yeah, very interesting uh, war totally opposite of what they claimed they were going to war for. Anyway, um, I'm happy, though, because I thought this was going to be a shambles. You know what I mean? Like, terrible versus horrible. But it wasn't, actually. You just never know what each whiskey is going to bring out in the other whiskey. You could do two against each other. It'll be depressing, dreary, a, a, a letdown. And it make you feel worse than you were feeling before, assuming you were feeling bad. You know what I'm saying? Then you take these two and you say, oh, it's just going to be terrible. You put them up against each other, the way they interact. Oh, you can't believe it. It's all flowers and a, a, a gurgling brook. So um, I've said this for years, at least two years. You just can't expect one thing versus the other thing when you're doing these, I don't care if it's bourbon, rum, American blended, scotch, etc. Different brands going up against each other brings out flavors from the competitor that you don't detect otherwise. So is there a purpose for blind taste tests? Is there a purpose? That's the ultimate thing because you don't know which is which if you do it right. And you, you have to be open-minded and sensible, and then it'll draw out things that you can't really sometimes explain. Now, beer, it'll do the same thing. And so um, it's just a fascinating ex experiment for me. Uh, you might not think so, but I do think so. And I'm very strong about that. All right, so uh, uh, on Tuesday, we'll do Sunny Brook against... Um, Oh, 
T.W. Samuels. That's a famous brand. Kind of. <laughs> but it is literally a real brand. T.W. Samuels has been on the market since 1844. And you can check your trademark data on that. And you'll find out that I am not wrong. Okay, so that's it. Excellent. I got it right. I could tell them apart. It was, but I did it. And uh, they were a lot better than I expected, actually. So there you go. Uh, the rematch versus the British, right? That's why I love, that's why I bow to the professor, right? Like I said on uh, Facebook alcohol eggs, I'm a cult leader now. <laughs> oh, well, I'm trying to be a good cult leader. You know what I mean? We all could move to Guyana together and talk about this. Many things. We need to talk about many, 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 many things. People don't realize how a... Right. Well, I don't want to get into that on this, but yeah, you're right. He won. Right, right. You're right, 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 right. You're right. All right. So anyway, um, thanks for watching this video production. And uh, the winner... Well, King Square, King Square. These things come out of left field and they just shock the world. And uh, King Square has been shocking me for years now. I just can't get over it. I thought, what a throwaway. You know, I'm spending a few bucks on junk. Wrong, wrong again. <sighs> just never know in the world of beer, wine, and liquor. You just never know. Thanks for watching this video production. Let me go call Cartwright and see what he wants. You take care.